What up my channel? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie and you are watching. Hello. Hello, welcome friends. This is going to be a very unique video that is a part of my Waste My Time series, which is a series where I talk about books that wasted my time. And I've made about eight of those videos. The latest one is going to be linked down below, along with the entire playlist of the Waste My Time videos that I've made over the years. But this video is going to be special because I am predicting books that I think are going to waste my time. These are all books that are on my physical TBR. They are books that I hope against hope that I do enjoy but because either of things I've heard about them or just like a pit in my stomach kind of gut feeling I don't think I'm actually going to like them but I have been wrong before and I do love being wrong about books like having low expectation for a book and then reading it and just it being mind-blowing I love 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 that so these books are going to be a mix of highly new anticipated releases backlist booktube and bookstagram popular books and books that are really not in the bookish community radar and i'm just very 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 excited about it but before we get into the nitty and the gritty of these books let's give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video which is none other than Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a beautiful, sustainable jewelry company that makes gorgeous, gorgeous, simple, elegant, and also bold pieces. They offset 100% of their carbon emissions, making them friendly and safe for the environment. They are such a phenomenal company that gives you luxury jewelry without those luxury jewelry markup prices. Ana Luisa is incredibly wallet friendly and it's not just because I'm sponsored with them, but 90% of the pieces that I wear in my everyday life when I'm not on camera are from Ana Luisa. I love their jewelry. I've been working with them for a few years now and their pieces just get better and better. Ana Luisa is currently running a very generous sale that is buy one, get one 40% off. And one of the pieces that I highly recommend are these beautiful blue and white earrings that I'm wearing. They are called the Salome earrings. These are some of my absolute favorite earrings and one of the top four pieces I've ever received from Ana Luisa. This gorgeous David bracelet would be an amazing Mother's Day gift. I love it because it is simple and elegant but yet sturdy. It's got some thickness to it. Now we have to talk about the Hana Lee necklace. I get comments on this everywhere and anywhere that I go. It is such a statement piece, so beautiful. It is both modern and timeless. It's got a beautiful classic feel to it with a modern twist. I literally feel like a sorcerer when I am wearing this piece. It is so seductive and dark and pretty. Oh, I just love it. This would definitely make a killer Mother's Day gift. And we also have the Inna necklace. This is such a beautiful, elegant statement piece. I mean, Wow. So all of the information is going to be linked down below in the description for you to check it out. Thanks again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring another one of my videos. Without further ado, let's talk about some potentially bad books. So the very first book that I have here is one of my most highly anticipated releases. And by most highly anticipated releases, I mean top 10. This is a book where from cover, synopsis, debut author, from all of that, I was hooked. I cannot wait to read this book. I'm going to be reading it next month in May in celebration of AAPI month, but, but I have heard mixed things. I have heard mixed things from Own Voices reviewers that I really trust and enjoy their opinions and also tend to agree with. And that makes me nervous. And the book that we are talking about is Portrait of a Thief by Grace Lee. Grace D. Lee, excuse me. I have an arc here and I'm scared y'all. I'm quaking in my Doc Martens 
and you know what I'm saying like I'm, I'm nervous I'm nervous because if this book lets me down I'm gonna shut down my channel and so this book follows the lives of a few Chinese students who ultimately decide to pull up a heist in order to return precious Chinese artifacts back to the community if they're able to pull this heist off they'll get 50 million dollars. I mean, doesn't this sound amazing? Brilliant social commentary on how many of um, artifacts in museums were actually looted and stolen. And I'm just, I'm so excited about everything involving this book, especially because I am in the middle of writing a heist novel myself. And so when I heard about this premise, I was like, oh my God, it's so fun, like it's so exciting. The premise of our books are actually somewhat similar. And so I was just even more geeked about that for that reason too. But like I said, I've heard some mixed things and I'm scared. I'm quaking. The Quaker oatmeal because that's me like literally quaking in my boots. It is 366 pages and the font is like pretty big. The chapters seem short so I have a feeling I'm gonna be able to blow through it and I'm I'm hoping y'all but I, I'm predicting that this might be on a worst books of 2022 list and I don't want it to be but I think I think it might be. And then the next book that we have here is another book that booktube just loves and I know I'm gonna get canceled for holding up this book and that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This book is one of booktube's babies. I remember when this book came out and everyone, everyone was obsessed with it. It was actually on my anticipated release list and I never ended up getting around to it and I forget the actual premise but this is it surrounds a group of women who love true crime and they get together at these meetings and talk about like the Manson family for example and then one evening after book club Patricia is viciously attacked by an elderly neighbor and um that's like where the vampire aspect come in i guess and this was a gift from amanda Perez. so thank you so so much this was on my wish list and i'm excited to read it i hope i love it i just have a feeling i have a feeling that this book is not going to be it i don't know what it is because and it's a pit in the stomach feeling because despite the fact that the cover is gorgeous the synopsis sounds cool i was anticipating it i'm still really excited about it despite all of that something keeps making me not want to pick it up it's like there's a force steering me away from this book and my gut's been wrong before but not often you know and so i'm like oh fuck like i'm predicting that this is going to make it onto a worst books of 2022 because i'm gonna make myself read it this year like i have to stop putting off this book i have to stop next up we have a book that is little known this was um reached out to me by the publisher the publisher reached out to me i don't know why i said that so oddly and asked if i would you know read this book and i checked it out and i was like yeah that sounds good and that book is none other than the final case by david gutterson now i think that this cover is unfortunate this should be your first and your last case i think that that's a part of the reason why this is getting a one star prediction because this cover is not giving like this cover already makes me wish i was done with the book and that's not a good sign so what the final case is about is a white couple is charged with the murder of their adopted i believe somali girl child she's ethiopian um and her adoptive parents who are conservative white fundamentalist christians are charged with her murder and this is an issue that is like very very sensitive within the black community issues of white parents adopting black children from africa and like not knowing how to care for them um and having like ulterior motives like not actually wanting to give them a loving home etc um and so i that's the reason why like this book really called to me but here's here's where the issue comes in the author is white and that doesn't automatically mean that the book's going to be bad it doesn't mean that um you know he might not have like important like uh, valuable perspective on this topic it means that i'm a bit nervous it is a very sensitive topic and um i want to make sure that it's being handled well and so i have trepidation about that but it also is what excites me about the book i'm like yep like i'm excited you know obviously this is like hope obviously this this has to be more to you than like a gimmick 
you know, like this has to be something that actually means something to you where you want to provide some commentary on. And so I'm putting my faith in this author, but I am nervous. I am so nervous about it. And like I said, the cover is not giving. I haven't heard anything about it. And um, also the pages are deckled edges. Why? why it's giving british lord like i don't i don't understand then we have another favorite 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 book and that is verity by colleen hoover this is a book that like book talkers love people on um honestly people on like bookstagram have been loving this book for so many years i keep hearing that it's like a romance thriller and it has like some domestic issues within it too. I'm trying to know very little about it grow, like going into it because I already have low expectations. And I picked this up at a used bookstore because I want to read it for a video where I read books that I don't think I'm going to like. Um, and or I think it was, it, it's for an experiment video and I, I think it's books that I might not like or testing out authors I haven't tried before, something like that. But when I posted that I hauled this book, both Mika and Mayana reached out and were like, yo, you are going to hate this book. And that is why it is on this list because if Mika and Mayana say like, hey, you're not gonna like that book, I'm probably not gonna like it. Then we have another book that has like a little cult audience and that is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And this is set in Norway, 1967, and it's like a witchy Norwegian book. The mythology that tends to be hyped on booktube just doesn't appeal to me or I just haven't enjoyed it. Like I did enjoy Sears, I did enjoy Song of Achilles. A lot of it just like hasn't appealed to me so I'm not having a whole lot of luck with European mythology and which is why I am nervous about this book and it just seems kind of boring. The village's men disappear at sea or they die at sea and then the women have to take over, rule rule the land and, and govern themselves. And it's weird because it sounds interesting and not interesting. Like off rip, it sounds interesting. And yet I never want to pick it up. The cover does not make me want to pick this book up. It's just like, I forget about it if I'm not holding it. And even when I pick it up every single time I have to read the synopsis which means it's giving one star. Another book that I think is going to waste my time is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Now, this is in the top three books that I think I might be wrong about. Like I said, I hope I love all of these books. Like, I don't, I, I have never intentionally picked up a book to hate read it. I know it's gonna happen one day, but I just, I've never done that. So I actually do hope that I like this book. I'm concerned because like I said, European mythology just, it just usually doesn't get me, but I hope this will. I don't think it will because again, I keep not wanting to pick it up. It just seems like one of those books that is going to have pretty writing, but ultimately is going to be a very forgettable story. And like I said, hopefully I'm wrong. I know Chloe of Books with Chloe really loved it. We read this um, for her Patreon, I think in April. I didn't get around to reading the book though. We're following Ariadne, who is the princess of Crete. Her brother is the Minotaur, who demands a blood sacrifice. And then there's Theseus, the prince of Athens, who arrives to vanquish the beast. She decides to defy the gods and to help Theseus kill the Minotaur. But will her decision ensure her happy ending? So mind you, like I am not educated in Greek mythology, so I probably mispronounced all of their names. It just seems forgettable. I'm not gonna lie, it just seems very commercial and forgettable and typical and I don't have a lot of faith in that, I'm not gonna lie. And then we have A Touch of Jen by Beth Morgan. Now, this is funny because this is a book that I can't remember if someone sent this to me for my wish list or if I bought it. I think, I think I might have bought it. Every now and again I'll forget if someone sent it to me for my wish list because I half the time I'll put the like the little notes that you guys send um, with your gifts inside the book so I can always remember who gave the book to me and the other half of the time I put them in this like um, thing that I have in my bedroom where I just like save a bunch of your notes and look back and read them when I need a little pick-me-up. Long story short, I was very excited about this and basically this is a kind of a weird surreal book about this young toxic couple who become very obsessed with this Instagram star named Jen and they end up infiltrating her life to get close to her and it's just a book about obsession and I really love the cover. I love the cover so freaking much. 
But again, I am nervous. I'm nervous that it's gonna waste my time because I know Kayla books on Lala read it and I can't remember what she thought of it, but um, something about what, something that she said about the book made me go, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And again, despite the fact that like, I really wanna read it, I magically don't reach for it when I have the opportunity to. And I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm gonna predict that I'm, it's gonna waste my time which I really, really don't want it to waste my time. This is one of the three books where I'm like, please don't do it. Like, I'm rooting for you. We're all rooting for you. Then we have Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. So this was like an impulse buy at a used bookstore. And again, this is another book where I was like, yeah, I'm gonna read that and it's gonna be good. And now that it's in my hands, in my library, I always pass over and it sounds really boring. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds so boring. And so this is a book about an average Midwestern housewife. A car accident reveals her husband's secret life as a serial killer. And she ends up having to move to this town called Stillhouse Lake to kind of escape him. And then of course, creepy things starts happening. And I've just never had good luck with that trope that like, I'm leaving to start over and the book opens with the main character starting over and then you get filled in along the way. It just, it sounds good in theory, but it just never does it for me. Then we have Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn. I know y'all are like, oh my God, Jesse, what is wrong with you? And it's because I read Dark Places. I still have not read Gone Girl. And I liked Dark Places, but again, nothing with it stuck with me. It was just like gross. I didn't like the pedophilia in it. I just like, I, it, I didn't get the hype. I didn't get the hype. I already had sharp objects on my shelf and it made me not want to pick this up. I know there's a show and it's supposed to be really good and blah, blah, blah. But again, like y'all know if you follow, if you follow me here a while, you know that like I do not have a good track record with commercial hyped thrillers. They usually just don't do much for me. They tend to be so formulaic and boring quite frankly um but i do have faith in jillian flynn not as much as i did going into her first book or my first book with her rather i just have a feeling that this is going to disappoint me and if i don't like this book i'm definitely not going to be continuing on with her work because there's so many thriller authors out there and just because everyone says like hey this one author is good doesn't mean i'm gonna like make myself read all of her books and hope that i enjoy one you know what i'm saying so this is her this is miss flynn's last chance and the final book on this list is a thriller it is a thriller or horror book i can't remember which and it is a classic by another beloved author and that book is daphne du Maul my cousin Rachel. Now Daphne du Maurier is such a beloved author. Rebecca is like one of the most famous books of all time you know in America and it's just so beloved and she's supposed to be really good at like suspense and gothic storytelling and this is going to be my first of her works. I'm so excited like I'm I love classic thrillers. I love them. I love I, I love them. I love a good class classic mystery and I know it's like a shame that I haven't gotten into Agatha Christie yet but I'm excited to I still haven't watched Gavin's um video where he like reads a bunch of mysteries by a Agatha Christie and tries to solve them but that sounds so good I'll leave it linked down below and we can all watch it together um but I think part of the reason why I haven't watched it yet is because I want to read some of Agatha Christie's um books um just so I can know more about her writing, like going into his video. But you definitely don't need to do that. I'm just extra. So this is described as a classic story of mystery and love. She spins a dark gothic tale of passion and unswerving love that turns to suspicion and fear. A woman of exquisite beauty descends on the great Cornwall estate, not descends. What is she, like an airplane? Despite his aroused suspicions, not aroused, she soon enchants him. In this tale of good and evil, he must decide whether the glorious Rachel, the mysterious widow of his beloved cousin, is out to destroy him or is the innocent victim of devious men with a tremendous longing to be loved. His fate and future lie in the answer to this deadly question. And so the reason that I think that I might not like this book is because, is there racism in this text? Maybe, maybe not. And that's like, honestly, one of my issues with going into these classics by white women that booktube loves is 
you often won't get warned about harmful ideologies or the people reading the books just simply don't notice the harmful ideologies and then you as a BIPOC person pick it up and you're like, okay, great, now I have to deal with this. Um, and I have been burned by that a lot on BookTube, which is why I'm very, very careful about like looking up content warnings and things like that um, and really lean into like listening to other BIPOCs, people's as reviews, um, on certain writers before going into their books because I try to protect myself as much as possible from racism. It's exhausting enough to have to like endure it in the real world every day than um, to like put myself through it in literature too. So I am nervous about that and it was part of the reason why I had to stop reading classics was because I, let me rephrase white classics was because I was just so tired of like being really into the book and then getting pulled out of it by racist storytelling um and like I said I have no idea if that's actually the case hopefully it's not but you know reason number two is because I have a bad relationship with hyped authors she is so beloved her work is so celebrated and nothing about it sounds like amazing and so I'm wondering if it's like another case of we're just like hyping up another mediocre classic white author maybe maybe not we're gonna see but I'm excited and like I said I enjoy classic writing like regardless of the regardless of race I just enjoy classic writing I love it I love it I love it I love it um, I love classical writing in various cultures um, and so so I am hoping that I enjoy this book but I am trying to be prepared some shit. So those are 10 books that I believe will waste my time. Let me know in the comment section down below if any of these books did waste your time. Do you think I'm wrong about any of these books? Which of these books do you think I will actually love? Take advantage of Ana Luisa's current ongoing Mother's Day sale. Buy one get one 40% off. Do not miss out. If you made it to the end of this wacky video why don't you comment down below with a question mark emoji because it is within question if I like these books. I also do have a Patreon. The Patreon dedicated video for this month was book things that I hate about booktube, but all of my social media links are in the description box below. Until next time, stay safe, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and I can't wait to see you in my next video.